President Nelson Mandela himself observed in 1997, I know firsthand that Israel has created an apartheid reality within its borders and through its occupation. The parallels to my own beloved South Africa are painfully stark indeed. The Mandela's family recognition of the similarities between the two continues to this day. Last week, his grandson, Chief Mandela Mandela, member of the South African Parliament, joined a press conference marking the 10th anniversary of Palestinian civil society's call for boycott, disvestment, and sanctions on Israel until it abides by international law. I was 15, almost 16. After my sentence, I was sent to Damun prison. I learned more in prison than I would have in a university. I met some leaders of the resistance. I was so proud of myself. They were the big fighters. And the other boys I was arrested with, they were so happy. We thought we were so grown up, even though we were all still dreaming of growing a moustache. We'd actually shaved four times a day to try to get our beards to grow in stronger so we could look older. I acted angry about my sentence, not because I thought it was too long, but because I thought it was too short. They gave me four years. I wanted 12 years. I thought it was sort of an honor. On December the 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks, 42-year-old African-American woman who worked as a seamstress, boarded a Montgomery City bus to go home from work. On this bus, on that day, Rosa Parks initiated a new era in the American quest for freedom and equality. How she sat there the time right inside a place so wrong it was ready. That trim name with its dream of a bench to rest on. Her sensible coat. Doing nothing was the doing. The clean flame of her gaze carved by a camera flash. How she stood up when they bent down to retrieve her purse. That courtesy. These buses and the whole system is discriminatory to Palestinians, said activist Fadi Quran as he waited at the bus stop. The West Bank Freedom Riders punched above their weight, drawing a lot of publicity for what was a relatively small event, reports the BBC's John Donison in the West Bank. The comparison to the Freedom Riders of 1960s America seemed to capture the imagination as dozens of journalists gathered to see the small group board the bus, our correspondent says. In actual fact, this was less, less a protest about segregation than more about freedom of movement, he adds. Oh. Rascal children of Gaza, you who constantly disturbed me with your screams under my window, you who filled every morning with rush and chaos, you who broke my bars and stole the lonely flower on my balcony, come back, scream all you like and break all the vases and steal all the flowers. Come back. Just come back. It is 48 years since Israel invaded the West Bank, including my hometown of Bethlehem. Practically the whole of my lifetime, I have not known my city under any state except Israeli occupation. 
A couple of years ago, looking at a photo album of an old friend and neighbor, I became acutely aware of how alien his experience of Middle Eastern geography was to me. In the mid-50s, he would spend Saturday nights jitterbugging at the Everest, a restaurant coolly positioned on top of the highest hill in Bethlehem, and at dawn would drive to Beirut to continue the party. Today, this experience is unimaginable. The Middle East of his youth no longer exists. For those under 30, the Middle East I once knew does not exist either. So much has changed over the past 48 years. I first became aware of the political reality of the occupation in the early 1970s. I was a child at the time, but you grow up quickly when you are entrusted with burning all the political books in your father's library whenever there is an Israeli raid on the neighborhood. I had to do this on two occasions, the second time causing a blockage to the entire sewage system of the building. As I zealously flushed the ashes of many important thoughts down the drains. We're here not to say that this is a unique situation, but to say it's connected. That all injustice, all oppression is connected. All anti-racist and anti-colonial struggles are connected. That's why we're here, talking about Rosa Parks, talking about South Africa. Because all of these things are connected. And no, none of us are free while we are complicit in another people's subjugation. Because a prison has two occupants, a jailer and a prisoner. Both are occupants of a prison. The Israeli people are trapped in that situation, just as the Palestinians. But whereas our government will speak out against injustice in various parts of the world, it does not speak out against injustice in Israel. It, it cheers them on. And those of us who support boycott and divestment and sanctions against the Israeli regime, not against the Israeli people, but against their regime, against the injustice perpetrated by their government. We are told by people like Hillary Clinton, we are told by the EU and, 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 and world leaders, Boycott and divestment and sanctions are not the answer to the problem. Well, their answer was to send Tony Blair. So I think our strategy is probably more realistic. It's also fine to die in our beds, on a clean pillow, and among our friends. It's fine to die once, our hands crossed on our chests, empty and pale, with no scratches, no chains, no banners and no petitions. It's fine to have a clean death, with no holes in our shirts and no evidence in our ribs. It's fine to die with a white pillow, not the pavement under our cheek, with our hands resting in those of our loved ones, surrounded by desperate doctors and nurses, with nothing left but a graceful farewell, paying no attention to history, leaving the world as it is, hoping that someday someone else will change it. Thank you. So we're here today as part of a new initiative called Make Apartheid History. The website was launched at midnight last night. Go and visit it, makeapartheidhistory.org. I'm here to speak for everybody here as we call to make apartheid history once and for all, everywhere. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. We hope you get to see many more of the Mandela um, Weekend events. Goodbye.
apartheid history, once and for all.